Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about Brussels sprouts and specifically how to grow Brussels sprouts in a cold climate. So if you are not familiar, Brussels sprouts do have a longer growing season. They are around the same time frame as a vast majority of tomatoes which is around the 80 to 90 day mark. Now, what that means for us in cold climates is that we actually have to start these indoors, which most people may not know. And so they start them directly outside and ultimately what ends up happening is no harvest. So we're gonna be going through start to finish growing Brussels sprouts in the garden and specifically for the end of fall or when the summer starts to wind down, if we don't have the actual sprouts forming, how we can trigger the plant into doing so, so we actually do still get a harvest, despite having that slower growing season. So Brussels sprouts have a very similar grow length, time-wise, as tomato. When you start your tomatoes, you're also going to want to start your Brussels sprouts. With that being said, I started my Brussels sprouts indoors this year, and the light I had them under was much too intense, so I actually started my seedlings under the same type of lighting that I started my tomatoes, my peppers, things of that nature. What I noticed was my Brussels sprout was very, very compact, and despite the fact that compact is generally a good thing, when it came to transplanting them outdoors, I noticed that they started lagging out more, which is more of the natural state of the plant. So if you have low lighting or poor lighting for grow lights, then these actually might be the crop to try out, especially if you are a beginner when starting plants indoors. You can start these in February, anywhere from February to March really, and still get a harvest in the fall. Keep in mind, the earlier you start them, the sooner your harvest will be. So if you want to have Brussels sprouts from say July to August, then you may want to start them January, February, March. So do them in waves and do two, three plants at a time. It's all up to you. Or you can do them all at once, harvest them all at once, and then freeze them all at once as well. The nice part about Brussels sprouts and growing them in a cold climate is not just the fact that they don't need intense lighting, they can just work off of a basic grow light, but also that we can put them outdoors sooner. Because they have a slight frost tolerance, so long as we even just provide them a plastic milk jug to kind of insulate them on nights that get very, very cold, we can put them outdoors before our frost-free days begin. You can actually transplant these outdoors anywhere from two to three weeks before your frost day starts. Keep in mind, if it's an intense frost night, then you are obviously gonna wanna cover it with a blanket, but if it's a light, mild frost, there's no reason why you can't just simply water them at night to keep that soil moisture up and then have them live or thrive going forward. The sooner you get them outside, the better because they do not like heat. So if you keep them until frost-free date starts or after, what ends up happening is we end up with kind of malformed growth and it's because of the heat of the greenhouse. So we want to get them outside in the fresh air out of the heat as soon as possible. The next part about growing Brussels sprouts outdoors and that is definitely do not want to plant these in a super super sunny location. So while in June everything's cool and nice by the time July and August roll around the heat and the sun can get intense. So you can place Brussels sprouts, especially if you're in a hot, warm place, in a partial shade area, and this will help shield the Brussels sprouts from too intense of sun, which ultimately can cause wilting and poor growth and overall a very poor harvest. So partial shade for those of us that are in a, you know, a very hot, very sunny climate, if you have hot sun and you have nowhere else to put the Brussels sprouts, then you may want to invest in a shade cloth that you can place over top of the Brussels sprouts when the temperatures get 30 and above. Trust me, it's a very, very good idea. If you don't, you will have Brussels sprout loss. When it comes to actually fertilizing your Brussels sprouts, they are kind of unique because they are in the brassica species uh, category. So they do enjoy 
higher levels of sulfur when compared to other crops that are typically grown in a garden. So your classic NPK will work just fine, but if you're using an organic or specifically an NPK fertilizer, you do want to check the levels of sulfur in that fertilizer itself. Sulfur does have to be present, not in mass quantities, but in some sort of a quantity, and that actually should be your third, your fourth ingredient listed on your fertilizer packet. So it would be NPK S. So the, the, the fourth one on the list should be sulfur, but keep in mind it needs to be in there. And the same goes for if you're growing mustard, cabbage, anything in the brassica species. Okay, so we've talked about growing them indoors. We've talked about transplanting them outdoors. We've talked about fertilizer. We talked about sun and heat. Now let's get into pests. So the pests for the Brussels sprout are the exact same pests for cabbage. And my Brussels sprouts this year did have some worm issues, but it is easily fixed with just some diatomaceous earth. In some cases, a nylon sock over top will help, or you can use predatory nematodes. If you have a slug or a snail issue in particular, the nematodes are most definitely your answer, but if we're dealing with worms or beetles, a powdering of diatomaceous earth is the way to go. For a caution, I have a whole video on diatomaceous earth, but something to keep in mind is that diatomaceous earth can affect pollinators. The saving grace is that the Brussels sprouts themselves don't have actual flowers. So it's very unlikely that any sort of a pollinator is going to go near the Brussels sprout or even hang out on a Brussels sprout. So diatomaceous earth works in that sense, but if you have uh, flowers or things that you know pollinators will hang out on, I would go away from the dusting of that. Another method that you can use if you don't like the idea of nematodes, although I heavily, heavily recommend ants, slugs, seriously guys, they deal with everything um, and they're good for your soil. So the nematodes, the diatomaceous earth, the other option would be copper rings. I know this sounds super, super weird. You can get really, really decorative looking copper rings to put into the soil or you can literally just put copper pipe in the soil. Either way, bugs that are soil born or live in the soil absolutely despise copper so something to keep in mind so we're coming to a close on the summer and for some of us we may have noticed that our brussels sprouts have not yet made sprouts which can be heavily discouraging because that was the whole point of growing the brussels sprouts to begin with so the best way to get your actual brussels sprout to sprout is to top it so i did an entire video on this but I use tomatoes as the example. The same science and math applies. You just literally take off the top portion of the Brussels sprout plant. And what that does is it redirects all the energy from new growth going upwards back into the growth down below, which in turn will be the sprouts themselves. So topping is the best way to start to get some Brussels sprout formation. Now keep in mind, the seedlings don't mind a little bit of frost and the adult plants actually don't mind frost at all either. So I did write about this on my blog, but some of the best times to actually harvest the Brussels sprout is after the first frost. So for us in zone three, that would be probably mid-September, end of September is when our first frost is going to hit. And that's actually the time you wanna harvest the Brussels sprouts. Now, if you are heavily opposed to, you know, mushiness, or if you like the bitter taste of Brussels sprouts, then, you know, harvesting before the frost is just fine. But if you wanna get rid of that bitter taste, um, and you want more of a softer type Brussels sprout, then after frost is the time to harvest and they're actually very, very tasty at that time as well. But that's all I have for growing Brussels sprouts in cold climates. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below what your tips and tricks for growing Brussels sprouts are. Remember, the comment section all the time is just as valuable as the video itself. Your guys' experience based on your zone and your area is arguably more valuable to someone in your zone than my face talking on a screen. So that's just the honest truth. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.